Hi everyone, my name is Parth Karaj, uh, those who don't know. And uh, I look after the India West region. Um, so, uh, first of all, thank you so much for turning up in uh, big numbers. Uh, I think Rushab mentioned that the first Frappe conference happened in uh, 2014. And do you know how many people came? I think those who are I see Kanaya, do you know how many people came? The count. It was less than 80. Uh, that's the count that I got. And today you can see that, you know, I think you already saw the queue for the lunch, so you can imagine. So in this whole growth journey, right, over the period of 10 years, uh, India as a region has played a very big role. And that is going to be the topic of my presentation today. So uh, just to take you back in time, Frappe was born in India. So naturally, India territory became a home ground for us, right? And uh, because we were based in India, naturally the ecosystem of Frappe also grew around us. Uh, by ecosystem, I mean our partners as well as the community members, right? Just to name a few partners who have been working with us for, for a very long period of time. We have Indictrans, we have Edit for It Digital, uh, you know, there's Greycube Technologies, all, all the partners uh, that, all these partners, they have been working with us for a very long period of time. And that provided us a base to expand globally. So, right, so what started in India now has a presence across 49 countries. So the partner network that we have, all the partners considered uh, uh, globally are in, available in 49 countries now. So, moving on. Um, so those who have been working with us for, for more than two years, they know that earlier Frappe used to do services as well. Uh, we were doing implementation ourselves. We also had a team for doing customizations and whatnot. Uh, there were certain challenges and we decided to quit that business. I'll talk about those challenges going forward in the presentation. But we decided to cut down on services and go partner driven, right? We thought that we will focus on the product while our partners do the services and earn revenue from services. So instead of competing with each other, we will complement each other. So as a result of that, uh, in 2022, we had close to 22 partners. And in 2024, now in India, I'm talking about, we have around uh, 71, uh, 60, 62 partners. So that's the partner community growth uh, in India region. Uh, yeah. So uh, while India has been a strong base for Frappe, there are certain uh, challenges as well. There are opportunities as well. So some challenges are very evident. So if you look at India as a market, uh, India market is a very cost sensitive market, right? Uh, you have to really work hard to get money out of someone's pocket. So that's the biggest challenge. Second is there's a lot of diversity as well, right? People prefer talking to someone or talking to the partner who is locally available. So that is, these, these couple of challenges are very big ones. And, uh, and at the same time, there are a lot of opportunities as well, because we know that India has been growing at around 7.8 eight percent that's the gdp of uh, india right so th there is a huge potential a lot of new companies are coming up so there are both sides of the stories uh, yeah so uh, when when i talk about uh, our partners right how we have uh, in, uh, increased the number of our partners that we have what is the frappe's role what, what does frappe do so th these are the few few things that we do uh, as an oem we focus on partner enablement so we have a pem team who will work with a partner in terms of training we do lead generation, so from the revenue point of view, if you are bronze and above, we also share leads with you that you can uh, reach out to and convert. Then Frappe also helps in driving local events, so we collaborate with our local partners in driving the local events. And uh, we also provide hands-on training, so there are multiple platforms where you can come. We have a daily office hour session that happens by the PEM team that you can join and get, get trained. And we also have Frappe School uh, platform. We also give two free certification to our partners. There are a lot of things that we do in terms of training. We have also done some in-person training that like we did one recently in Mumbai sales training for our partners. So we do take such initiatives and localization. So, so the, uh, we have localization capabilities available for multiple countries, but talking about India specifically, we have India compliance app that we have built in collaboration with Resilient Tech. Tech. So yeah, these are some of the things that Frappe uh, as an OEM does to help our partners. Just a few pictures, uh, we did a Frappe local uh, event in Ahmedabad, Gujarat, uh, you know, along with uh, Sanskar, Matias, and Neskil. Um, uh, we did uh, one event in Goa, uh, Software at Work, who is our partner, they front-ended this whole event. Um, yeah, so while the market, 
for if you look at from frappes lens right uh, india is the top performing territory but can i say that we have conquered the india market no there is still a lot of potential and if i have to give you a classic example you can look at the tally ecosystem they have lakhs of businesses running on tally that's the market you know that's the size of the market if i give you a number of gst registered businesses it's 14 million 14 so that is the size of the market so there is still a huge potential uh, when it comes to growing in the india market and i already mentioned like you know the economy is growing at 7.8% so yeah now since i look at uh, india west region uh, growth in india west region i just wanted to share some numbers as well how india west as a territory has been performing for frappe uh, we have uh, you know 12 plus bronze partners 24 entry partners uh, these are some of the these are the top 5 performing partners india in india west region particularly uh, if i give you a growth chart of india west as a territory from january to uh, august we have done 2x more than 2x actually that's the growth of india west region and now uh, i would like to call up on stage a couple of our partners uh, you know gray cube technologies uh, jignesh shah is here who is also a best partner award winner of 2023 and i'll also invo- invite uh, ganesh he is from exacure but he works in collaboration with hybro labs just to have a quick uh, quick chat you can come this side so uh, you know i just want you to share very quickly you know your journey and your uh, yeah, growth I mean, along with frappe because he is sure. also one of the oldest partner uh, 2017 uh, as rushab said that we were almost into home grown erps and then we were looking for an open source erp a scalable solution and at that point in time we uh, stumbled upon udu and we were almost on the finalization stage but as you know uh, genuine products and genuine people's fame spreads by word of mouth and at that point in time the mouths were very less so we were not able to find out erp next but luckily one of my colleague vijay found out in one night and it took him the whole night to do that installation and setup thanks to aditya today that in 5 10 seconds we are able to run the site and finally we i mean we were just blown out with that product itself and we were we, we jumped in the 2017 conference and since then each conference we have been here <laughs> that's great now uh, moving on to ganesh hi uh, everyone yeah. can you just share a little bit about you know because he has uh, come into the frappe ecosystem very recently and he has also grown rapidly so you know h- how was your journey how did you discover yarp in just a few words okay so uh, thank you so much for giving me opportunity we have completed uh, yesterday only i mentioned uh, nine months and nine days <laughs> in the frappe uh community so uh, before that uh, i was selling salesforce before that some different erp then uh, very very different software and i always tell the sales is equal to product knowledge and conviction but earlier that product knowledge is what we have to hide before showing the customer it was my concept and then when i stopped salesforce and i was searching for a product which can be you know actually a good product and everybody was asking me what what next ganesh what next ganesh and then i found out erp next <laughs> so i started the journey and you know uh, selling the license uh, like a, the product like a salesforce and now you are into the erp next you can imagine the you know uh, i got like you know khazana mil gaya mereko <laughs> something like that yeah that's great uh over to jignesh bhai we'll just take a couple of more minutes uh, if you would like to share a couple of your success stories yeah, yeah. or I mean, implements uh, that everyone you... might have heard of iim ahmedabad have you heard of that institute yeah so f- people from outside of india it's like stanford or harvard of india so they were like almost i mean you, everyone knows quickbook were closing down their business they were into uh, they were using this system and they were actively looking out now how how to shift to any other system and they approached zoho zoho uh, they had 1000 cost centers at that point in time and uh, zoho said uh, sorry guys we can support only 80 they said we are ready to pay you check out what you can do for us they checked the code and they said there's a limitation in the architecture we can't do anything <laughs> over here <laughs> and thanks to our frappe framework dipesh for having a, such a beautiful feature of accounting dimension and cost centers that we were able to shift them completely 
all their six years of data, all their three companies into ERP Next in just a span of one and a half month with penny to penny balance sheet matched everything. And that was a great. Thank you. And this, the second uh, most important thing, uh, I mean, in the implementation, and we don't know how much scalable this ERP Next, the potential the product has, because uh, you might have heard of third party logistics. In the third party logistics, there is also a big logistics companies handling, like you might have heard of ports, right? The Kandla port or big ports in India. So what they do is they get the cargo, uh, like in metric tons from the ship, and they di discharge it and dispatch it into the rails and send it to the big companies like Tata, JSPL, all those. So we have implemented for such large scale on ERP and that's possible just because uh, such a highly scalable, flexible solution it is. That's great, thanks Thanks a lot for your kind words. I, I have a few more questions, but you know, in the interest of time, I think I'll have to wrap it up. You know, you know, Ganesh always has great stories to share. He, you, you will find him somewhere around here. Only you can catch up with him later on. But I'll invite up on stage uh, Mahima to talk thank about. Thank you so India. much again. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, talk, I'll invite Thanks. Mahima to talk about India, North and South, uh, North and South region. Hello, good afternoon everybody. So I hope everybody is awake now <laughs> after the lunch. So uh, I am Mahima, uh, handling the revenue and growth for the India South and North region. So we'll share, I am here to quickly share you some insights about the region. As Pat uh, quickly mentioned about the whole India region, but we'll specifically uh, tell you about the South and North. So Coming quickly on the number of count, like what partners we have. So total, we have 190 plus partners across the globe. But when it comes to India, South and North, we have 25 in South and nine in North region. And quickly, uh, both of the regions have their own things where the South mostly relies, uh, they have more uh, advanced industries, uh, mostly streamlining their processes, especially like IT, manufacturing, and uh, pharmaceutical industries. Uh, so we can see the growth, uh, month on month average growth across the year. Whereas for North region, uh, the industries are more traditional where they want to replace the older manual processes and want to uh, come to an automation cycle. So that's what it is about and you can see the growth of for both of the regions. We will also see that who are the top five growing partners uh, in those regions. So I'll quickly share you with that. And each of the partners have their own journey. Uh, they have their own skill sets uh, where they are working towards, uh, towards that each day. So coming uh, to the first partner, which is Digitalist Tech from New Delhi, it's India North. And they uh, are literally, uh, they became our partners uh, after they were customers first. They switched their business from SAP to ERP Next. So that's how they have used ERP Next first and then they thought of becoming our partners. Coming to the next one is Promentia. They were already into the ERP segment and were implementing some legacy ERPs and switched to the ERP Next. And they have been into this ecosystem since a very long time now. So the third one is Nestor Bird. So they are based out of, again, uh, the Indian North region. And uh, they also uh, were our partners since quite some time. And uh, before three years, they shifted all 50 plus customers to Frappe Cloud. So that's their journey. Uh, coming to Tridots from India South region, they uh, they are really good at you know building some custom apps and which you can see on Frappe Cloud plat Frappe Cloud Marketplace platform. So that's the journey. And coming to the Wahani, they uh, are also from the India South region and they get the kick well while they implement and they customize uh, uh, solutions and they get challenges from the customer. So that's all about them. Now. Uh, to just quickly wrap this whole thing, uh, we will call upon uh, two of our partners to ask them about their journey and what is uh, the what does the future hold for those regions. So we'll quickly uh, I'll quickly introduce uh, the pain from Digitalist Tech and uh, Vigila from Momsco team. So please, uh, I welcome them to the stage. Thank you so much. Hi, thank you, Mahima, for the invitation. Yeah, so uh, definitely. 
So definitely this is not a war between India South and North region, but we'll just uh, try to understand the perspective of both the regions, that how they're working and what does the future hold for them. So uh, we'll ask Vijala uh, to you first, what are the major industries you've worked with till now? Uh, the major industry we do work with is uh, manufacturing industry and the project-based uh, companies actually because the story behind it is uh, we just implemented that ERP next in our own family business. One is project-based company and the other one is a manufacturing unit. Once the completion of the success of implementation, we just gone for the outside project. So every time we do like to prefer to stay in the same stream itself. Thank you. Great. Maybe you can answer the same question, like what are the major industries you work with? We're working with manufacturing, distribution, e-commerce companies for now. So, uh, like you said, we were customers first and uh, partners, we converted from customer to being a partner. We similarly have a family business into contracting, engineering and manufacturing. So, we implemented it there first and now using that expertise, we are helping the market. Great. So, what are the strategies? What is your current strategy for like both of you? So. Yeah, I'm gonna focus more on the uh, our primary domain of manufacturing and distribution, and try to develop more industry-specific solutions like other partners have been doing, and they've been really inspiring in developing this special solutions. So we'll be doing that. Okay, would you like to answer the same? Yeah, of course, as we are expertise in that one, because we know in those two industries, some tailor-made solutions will not be suitable for any way. For the process may be different from means company to company. So that uh, flexibility of customization in Frappe framework and the ERP Next, obviously, we'll like to use it for the other uh, industries also. Okay, so like, uh, are you confident that the North and the South region alone like has opportunities for you also to survive in the market and how is it going? Yeah, it's a good question anyway. Uh, obviously, I would say yes, but to uh, be like everybody interested in globalization and uh, abroad customers, if we have more, that will be one of the credibility we may have to showcase to the upcoming uh, customers who are right. interactive with. So we just, uh, even if it's a feed for us, also, I mean, the, both the sections are enough for us, but we do prefer to do the outside customers also. Thank you. Okay. For the North region, what do you think? Yeah, I'm confident. See, uh, India is a huge market, like Parth has already shown us the market size of how other applications are doing. And right. Luckily, being limited number of partners in North region, <laughs> I see a huge market in North. And but yes, we are open to outside region also. But yeah, I'm confident about North region. Great. So just last thing that uh, any advice for the you know future prospect partner prospects that if they want to become a partner, any one thing they want to keep in mind, one suggestion, quick suggestion for them. Yeah, understand the value chain, the value that ERPNX is giving to its customers, aligning to the target market. I mean, the open source nature that ERP Next is giving is does not usually align with how upcoming partners see as their business prospects. But once you understand that, align it with your your customers, your your you provide that uh, knowledge share to the customers. I mean, it's a it's a fruitful business. Secondly, also uh, I would uh, you know propose to have a solid uh, delivery team, quality first. Only then the service business will thrive. Yeah, the journey with Frappe as a partner is uh, very encouraging because uh, when we do the implementation for our own organization, it was quite challenging because the product knowledge was limited. When we get in connected with the Frappe through partnership, it was quite easy for us. So whoever is onboarding as a partner, there will be hiccups in the beginning, but still the journey will make us a, uh, like a co more confident in the product and the support we do give to. Means whatever we are getting from the FAPA, we can deliver to the customer directly. That connection will help us a lot for that support. Thank you so much, both of you, to share your insights. And uh, that's all about it. So we'll proceed. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you, everyone. So now I would like to call uh, my colleague Priyanka. She will take you towards the journey of Middle East. How is it working for her and how is it working for everybody? So over to you, Priyanka. Um, hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, or as we say in Arabic, Salam Alaikum, Marhaban. Um, it's great to see you all over here to join us at Frappe Wars. All these years, what happened was 
I had like I was a part of Frappe team since a long time, but all these years Frappe was was all about India. This year it's very special to me because I have lot of partners, customers from Middle East, and community members from Middle East joining us today over here. Uh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I forgot about the slides. So I'll just talk a little bit about me. Uh, I'm Priyanka Kothai, Regional Manager of Middle East. And uh, I'm here today to take you guys through the journey of Middle East uh, with Frapper Technologies and myself as well. Little bit about me. I'm born and raised in Sudan. All these years, I have been complaining to my parents that Arabic is very difficult staying in Arab country all these years. I had to learn Arabic. It was, it's a difficult language. The grammar is very difficult. All these years I got passing marks just to pass. And what benefit got out of this was, at least I'm able to converse now. Like I can converse with my Egyptian partner, KSA partners. I can at least say hi, hello, how are you? Like basic things. So that is how my career also got evolved in. I am now a partner manager. I used to be a partner manager and now I'm a regional manager for Middle East too. That is how my career grew. At Frappe, I started in 2021. And uh, it has been how many years now? Like a good amount of time. This year I have done consulting. I did support. I did uh, partner renewals customer renewals, multiple things I did. And lastly, I'm here with my partners, with partners of Middle East. Um, in 2022, when I was doing partner renewals, partner success, what I saw was we had only 20 partners and today we are 40 plus partners around the region. <laughs> what made this shift? How did we come to this? As Neha and Parth already mentioned, we did a major business shift. Frappe moved away from services and we moved to the cloud company. This paved way for our partners to come in and play a great role in the community. They became the core part of our community. Frappe, of course, Frappe can't do everything. So Frappe is taking care of cloud. We are taking care of the product and partners are doing the implementation, consultation and front facing to the customer. Next was when you say that partners are now engaging, they need recognition. So partners, there are a lot of partners. These are just 40 who are Frappe registered partners. On daily basis, I see unregistered partners. So there are much bigger community and those who wishes to get recognition, those who are working on their scalability, they are getting registered with Frappe. Who doesn't want to grow? Frappe is growing, so are our partners. So join our community. Let's understand market dynamics of Middle East, why these partners are growing this rapidly. Middle East being a common ground for Western block and Eastern block of the world, a lot of small businesses are starting there. When they want to do trade in these two different regions, it's easy. It's easy to pass around Middle East. We all know what I'm saying about, what I'm talking about. So Middle East being a common ground, it plays a great role with its geographic location as well. Second one is most important one. We have seen the history of Middle East is Middle East, is Middle East made money on oil. And now we are saying that in previous years, uh, taking example uh, for KSA Vision 2030, government is actively reducing, trying, they are actively reducing their uh, focus from oil businesses to multiple businesses like tourism, IT sector and real estate. Now that is where we are standing. We have seen other um, countries like UAE, Oman, Qatar. Everybody is going to have uh, taxation coming soon. It's no more a tax-free region. Everybody is going to implement tax. So that is, that is where Frappe stands with her partners to help these countries go through digitalization. Now, today I'm here 
proudly saying that Middle East is Frappe's second highest contributing market after India. Thank you. With our 40 plus partners who represent in more than 10 countries around Middle East and more than 5,000 customers. This is the curve that we are seeing. We are growing 7% month on month. And in a year, you can imagine how much we are growing. And we are planning to grow more and more with our partners. What did Frappe do? What were the steps Frappe took for this, expa for this growth? First thing important was getting Frappe Cloud expansion done. We introduced KSS servers. We introduced hosting in UAE. And we already had Bahrain. So now, if you want to host in Middle East, you have these three regions where you can host. Next is important activity that we did. We started having personal touch. We started meeting customers, partners, community members in person. First meetup started, first Frappe Local we did in Dubai. Then we had a meetup in KSF with Umer. We had a bootcamp uh, done by Sharik and Hussein. ERP Next Bootcamp by Sally and Dharmesh. Community Meetup hosted by Safwan. Then uh, we had a meetup in Muscat in Molecule's office. So what is our plan ahead? Expansion. That is like we have 40, we want to grow to 80, we want to grow to 100. We want to grow high. So we want to expand our partners network Regional compliance. With the same partners, we want to build more and more regional compliance. We see that Middle East is not small. It is more than 10 countries. So each country have different compliance. We want to build all of this compliance. Educating market. So I have my partner over here as well. He is going to give us more um, knowledge on this. We would love to educate this market because when I, I have been talking to customers and partners on day on day in, day out basis. What I have seen is, in UAE, KSA, if you are talking to any company, either they have one Indian accountant or one Egyptian. Indian market is currently being, Indian market is currently being evolving, but now I'm, my target is to educate Egyptian market in their local languages. And last is marketing events. So these are some official announcements. Um, we are going to be there in Jitex with uh, Quark Cyber System, Wahani, and Lavaloon. Next is we, this is an official announcement. We are doing Frappe Local Riyadh for the first time in, on 18th of December. And uh, we are doing Frappe Local Cairo as well. Lastly, I would like to invite our partners uh, who represent different regions. So I would like to invite Vivek from Quark Cyber System to let us know about his journey. Hi, Vivek. Uh, I'll give you a mic. Hi. Hi, everyone. How did you discover open source and what is your journey till oh, uh, Silver Part now? Uh, so, uh, I started my journey with uh, Frappe, uh, Frappe products in uh, 2013 when uh, Frappe was more known as Web Notes, if I'm right. The, yeah. the, uh, I, I, I remember still doing the first setup for our, one of our first clients uh, for ERP Next. It was the ERP Next version 4. Uh, I started as a freelancer. I was a freelancer back then. It's been 10 years. Today we are a, a decently sized company. We are a silver partner. Nice to hear that. We are growing. We are having enterprise customers. Uh, and it has been a wonderful uh, journey. It's been a journey of growth and it's, it's, it's been fulfilling. Since you are in the open source space, when you finish uh, an implementation and get out, the customer has a big smile. Unlike when you get out of uh, an SAP or an Oracle implementation where the customer is thinking about the next year's renewal, you know, <laughs> so, uh, there is genuine value uh, that we feel that we give to the customer. And uh, uh, when, uh, when that happens, it feels very fulfilling, you know. So, yeah, that's, yes. that's, that's my journey. I would like to know 
I would like our crowd to know how you are positioning Frappe Cloud in UAE market and how do you think Frappe Cloud will evolve in our market? Well, uh, uh, for a very long time, I always tell uh, people or educate my clients also that do not get deceived by the name ERP Next. Uh, ERP Next is not an ERP. It's, it's more of a digital transformation platform. Um, so I, I see F, uh, FC today as a, a platform as a service because you have a lot of uh, products, including a full-fledged ERP on it. And uh, when a customer enters into the space of uh, Frappe Cloud, you're, you're having a whole suite of products to digitize your entire business uh, flow. Right, so it's just not a it's just not an ERP product or a CRM product. It's it's a it's a platform which allows a company to undergo 100 percent or 99.9 percent .9 of uh, digital transformation. So that is how I try and educate my customers on what really FC today is. Thank you so much, Vivek, for sharing this with us, and thank you so much for participating with us at Jitex and in the silver partnership and soon he's going to come for gold partnership. Yeah, yeah, Thank you sure. so much, Vivek. Thank you. Next, I would like to invite Meena Butros from Accenture LSE. He's our preacher. He's our preacher in Frepe, for, of Frappe Cloud in Egypt market. I don't do stuff in Egypt. He does. He does all the stuff. He does all the activities in the Egypt. So, this is like paid audience. So. <laughs> Yes, Meena. So I would like to know how you have evolved in last five years and how was your journey around this? Well, we were basically responding to the market. We started like almost five years ago. What we are seeing that the market is evolving almost doubling year on year. Okay. This is reflected in our numbers as well as on our talent pool as well. And also in the uh, ecosystem demand. We are seeing more uh, ERP next adoption. Uh, people are standing, starting to recognize the brand more and more. And now with FC, all the problems are being solved. So yeah, yeah, there is like a huge demand going on and we are anticipating more gross percentages in the future. Great. So another thing is what I have always felt is um, Egypt is a very sensitive market. So how do you position Frappe Cloud in the sensitive market? Well, because if, if I give him any lead or anything, I'm pretty sure that he will get that customer on Frappe Cloud. There is no if, but, nothing. Frappe Cloud. Well, actually, we currently are almost pitching Frappe Cloud before we are pitching our services. We are telling them, if you guys are going to go with ERP next, just be on Frappe Cloud, even if you are hiring someone else. Because it only makes sense. Uh, for We have been almost in business for five years. Uh, we actually witnessed the birth of Frappe Cloud. And I actually call it around the office that I consider from Cloud our child as well as Aditya's, sorry. Sorry, man, but yeah, it is. Uh, it, it's like solve this, the three problem dilemma that we had, like uh, the eco, the, in the ecosystem or the open source, because Frappe is open source. Yeah. So there was always a question, uh, how will this work? So now the customer gets the value, the partner gets the ease of mind and uh, the no vendor lock-in policy as well as uh, Frappe is getting the revenue. So it just makes sense out of the box. So yeah, and we are expecting more adoption in the future as well. Thank you so much, Mina, for sharing this Thank insights. You. Thank you so Thank much. You. Have a nice day. <laughs> Lastly, I would like to invite Accurate System, a bronze partner in Saudi Arabia, Mohammed Wasebi. Thank you. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. <laughs> Shukran jazeelan. Salam alaikum. It's good afternoon. Yes. Hi. Okay. So, uh, Wasebi, I would like to know how has your partnership journey with Frappe has been? How, how you are seeing the partnership? How you have uh, used ERP Next as your product, like not your product, but uh, how you have used ERP Next in case, how you have acquired customers in case? All right. Okay. So you can, yes. of course, say our product. Yes. Yes. Of Actually, course. Actually, uh, Accurate was born Frappe. Okay. Uh, I will speak on behalf of uh, Reda, as everybody yes. knows, <laughs> I'm the founder of Accurate. I think this guy graduated from university with the determination of making a company that sells uh, Frappe. That's that's okay. how it started. <laughs> so he flew in. I think this was two th 2015. 
okay. to learn and uh, to see how this will work. And then he started uh, That's nice. uh, tinkering Since with this. And, and, then, and then in 2019, I was brought in as a co-founder and we were you know, turned into a, an established LLC. Nice. And until today, our core product and only product is Frappy. That is really nice to hear from him. <laughs> What I would like to understand is KSA market have been expanding a lot. So how do you see KSA market in coming five years? What are your perspective on the market? So brilliant. So uh, let, let's, let's link this with the, uh, Vision 2030 with the country. Maybe everybody knows that. You mentioned it. And uh, if I reflect that on the digitalization uh, or the digital landscape of the country, in 2018, Saudi Arabia was ranked number 54 in the digital capability index. It's called OSI, it's a global uh, index. Today, uh, Saudi is ranked as number four globally and number two in the G20. And that determination, of course, is, is uh, 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 in, in everybody's mind, whether private or public. It's uh, amazingly being led by the yeah. uh, public sector, so, so the government is drastically transforming. If I link that into the Frappy thing now, many uh, organizations, government entities with big, uh, uh, big missions are, uh, have open source in their core uh, construct of what they want to do. So I would like to uh, mention also this thing that um, Accurate System have taken part in Future Factors Initiative as well, which government itself have initiated um, funding factories in KSA, which has to go through digitalization. So they are, they are planning to participate in this thing. Uh, yeah, thank so, you so much, Wasavi. Yes. Yeah, all right, thank you. Thanks, thank everyone. Thank you so much, everyone. Right. Uh, yes. Okay. Bye. Uh, I would like, yes, uh, I would like to say thank you with all the partners on the stage. Thank you so much, Vivek, Meena, and Wasabi. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, next, I would like to invite Faraz on the stage. Um, thank you, Priyanka and Middle East partner. Seems very inspiring work. So I am Faraz. I'll be now uh, quickly going through how the APAC, the Southeast Asia, that is a non-APAC that we call internally, is uh, working out for us. So at the moment, we have 23 active partners. There have been new partners onboarded uh, this year. And the challenge is, uh, you know, 13 countries, so specifically different languages and new developments much needed. I mean, a lot of localization is needed. So I just started my journey as a partner manager uh, very recently. I've got the opportunity with Enterprise to uh, handle this region as well. So I just figured out that, you know, there were a lot of uh, opportunity to travel and meet them in person. So I made a trip that uh, I figured out that there were some two partners that were doing well in that region and basically it was two countries, so Philippines and Indonesia that was uh, doing well in this region. So I thought, but I don't have that connect. So I thought I should visit them and at least know what these guys are doing. So I uh, decided I, you know, for the first time I should go out and, uh, you know, outside India and uh, visit them. So this is my first visit. I uh, landed in Jakarta because of uh, a partner called Agile, where they were doing well, they were second most, but I couldn't uh, visit Philippines, maybe uh, next time. So this was my first experience. I wanted to meet the partner. So the left is the team Jakarta and our old community member now, Anton, uh, running his another company. So these were the guys who introduced uh, ERPNX in Indonesia almost 2018, 19. And uh, I also made other partners, our entry level partners. Uh, with them, I also met our enterprise customer. So it was a great experience. They were, you know, kind of happy that at least someone is there from Frappe. But then the crux was to bring the entire community together. So we had a small event, I would say, but there were good uh, turn ups and, you know, there were customers who were using RPNX from version 10. That why I uh, figured it out. But then this is how the growth from last, I would say, Roughly, uh, you know, two, three months, the growth has been good. We've been getting almost 18 to 20% on an average from last three, four weeks. 
and uh, be the feedback i mean the main feedback was from the region that i got from the community is you need to have data center there as well so very quickly you know frappe cloud team helped to introduce a new center you've already heard about this and uh, with the help of uh, umair i would say he's been uh, helping localization across the country so agile would go ahead and make uh, india indonesia compliance open source this november uh, so this is a big new development uh, from them so i think that's it for now for the apac region i'll be calling my colleague ankita so hello everyone uh, i hope you are enjoying the talks up till now so i'll take you to some place interesting that is the african wonderland so hello everyone my name is ankita i am the regional manager for the african subcontinent i've been working in the african subcontinent for the last 2 years and uh, i look into the overall growth of that region uh, to start off with uh, i imagined africa 2 years back to be something like this because inspired by masai mara and serengeti i thought that it is completely filled with green grasslands zebras giraffes the lion king so there are some parts like that of course but africa is not just about green grasslands it's more to that more uh than that in that region so when we visited africa this february me with rashab and hosen we had local events over there so we found africa to be something like this a very good infrastructure very good architecture and uh, to a certain ex extent we even got yellow in uh, yellow fever injection so we thought that we'll get some dangerous insects or mosquitoes but to our surprise we didn't find any mosquitoes in india we get we have more mosquitoes than in in africa so uh, that was kind of a surprise but jokes apart uh, we found a general optimism within the people and it changed my perception about africa completely and when your personal perception sometimes your personal perception comes in the way when you are also strategizing for the market and with that i try to re-strategize the market and how we plan to grow in the africa region so currently we have around uh, 26 regional partners in that region um we have the major footprints in the east african region we have couple of partners also joining in from the african region so we have around 15 plus uh, partners in the east africa region that mainly includes regions like uh, countries like kenya tanzania rwanda uganda so we have the major footprints in these areas and of course uh, regional uh, localization is also there that needs to be fulfilled so we have a lot of partners working on regional localizations so we have two partners who's going to speak on this in the panel discussion as well uh, aquatech and the navari team they have done localizations in kenya and tanzania and of course we conducted two frappe local events in the month of february one in nairobi and one in dar es salaam a huge kudos to all the partners who have made this a success uh, including navari's team aquatech vv systems duty services all of them and in these local events we met very interesting community members and one of them was dr thomas mogi uh dr thomas mogi is uh, a doctor by profession and he was quite inspired by erp next and the frappe community and the thing that he has achieved we are still yet to achieve in india he has already implemented erp next for the largest hospital in kenya and they are running on their own press so they have their own frappe wares they are running it on that and his philosophy is that you frappenize everything so uh, to uh, because of some reasons he could not join us today 
but we hope he joins us in the next Fapeverse. So, but every region comes with its own challenges. So Africa is also not perfect. We also face some challenges. And one of them has been constantly the economic and political instability, which is there in the region. And to a great extent, we have accepted it. And we are growing with that uh, instability itself. But also data localization. I think once, this, uh, once the GDPR came into the picture, there are many countries who are facing these localized regulations that data should be localized in their own region. So to a great extent, we have resolved this issue through Frappe Press and Hybrid Cloud. And also overseas transaction restriction. So uh, the economic and political instability, because of the political instability, there is of course overseas transaction restriction, which is there. But we have now dedicated payment partners in different regions. We are also going to come with upcoming payment partners who will also resolve these issues. So what future beholds for Africa? Currently, our MRR is growing at. 30,000 USD in the African region on Frappe Cloud itself. And it's currently still an completely uh, unexplored market, unexplored open market, and there is a lot of brand adoption and penetration which is required. And due to, to create this brand, we are also conducting various locals and trainings. Uh, Hussein already had done framework training in uh, Dar es Salaam as well as Nairobi. So we are going to have more locals and trainings as well in these regions. Also introducing Hold Your Thought, we are going to have first overseas frappevers in Nairobi on the 6th of February at the Kenya School of Government. All thanks to all the partners who are going to be contributing to this frappevers. So next talk. We'll have a panel discussion. So first up, I'll be welcoming Mr. Harish Bhatt. He's a veteran and has around 31 years of experience. He has more experience uh, than since Frappe was born. So, so he's a veteran and he's the managing director at SoftTech Consultants. Uh, he, ha he has made, a, he had, he has got a pivotal role to get Epicor and Tally into Tanzania. And he's over here giving us great insights on the business aspects of ERP Next. We welcome Mr. Harish Bhatt. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ankita. So you have been in the ERP business for a really long time. Yes. So what do you think uh, will be the ERP Next future in the African subcontinent? Uh, I personally have been in the field of IT software for 37 years and uh, 31 years of that in ERP implementations. And uh, we have seen a very wide range of uh, ERP applications. We focus mostly on enterprise. Uh, most of our clients are between 200 users to 4,000 users. Uh, we have worked extensively in uh, governments, central governments, local authorities, and so on. So with that uh, background, we have been working on a range of uh, proprietary solutions. By the way, we took uh, Telly to Africa. This was in 1993. So coming back to your question, how do I see ERP next? There are a few things that have happened in Africa which are important to understand. Number one is that uh, proprietary systems are expensive um, and the vendor lock-in. Uh, one of your colleagues mentioned that. So a lot of clients are becoming very concerned about that. Cost is escalating. License fees, support costs, lock-in. The second major uh, aspect in India, like it, in, in Africa, like it happened in India, there is now a very large number of people who are graduates in the field of IT for software and et cetera. They bring in a level of capability that never used to exist before. So they are interested in looking at solutions that they can engage in, they can work in, not something ready-made. So that's important. The third is that there is a huge growth in the small and medium enterprise business. Um, the number of uh, businesses being set up, being created are very large. 
there's a lot of government focus on promoting ICT. So that's very important. And uh, the ERP market is projected to grow from about 5.38 billion for Middle East and Africa to about 10 point something billion dollars by 2020, 2032. So the potential is huge. What makes ERP Next, and uh, we have only been on ERP Next for slightly less than a year. Uh, we are newbies um, as far as ERP Next is concerned, but we spent a lot of time in trying to look for a product that would meet the next generation requirements, that would meet the new aspirations, that would meet the new expectations of the African continent. And uh, that's how we um, set up on ERP Next. So what do, we, what do we think of ERP Next? One, it doesn't really matter whether it's open source or cheap or free. What matters is what it can do. So the most important criteria is, does the core product have the capabilities, the features that would be needed by the businesses? Number one. Number two, how can that be met either through the core product or through any verticals that people have developed. There are many verticals for people who have developed specializations. So meeting expectations is important. Number two, ease of use. A lot of ERP applications fail. It's a known fact. And they fail because they are complex to implement. We are looking for something that was relatively easy. So that we believe is a powerful feature for ERP Next. Does it have support? Yes. Is it scalable? Yes. Is it secure? Yes. Now, with that background, can we reduce cost? Yes. Is it open source and can you do a lot of things on your own? Yes. Do you have a low-code, no-code platform where people can customize? The answer is yes. So ERP Next ticks a lot of boxes for the next generation ERP in Africa. And that's the reason why we firmly believed that it would be the right path for us to take. So we work in many African countries. We believe that with this kind of capabilities that the product has, we should be able to take it not only to SMB. Small and medium enterprises has never been our focus, but enterprises, and we believe that the government could be a major uh, section where this could happen. So in our mind, that is our vision of taking ERP next into Africa. My next question is, is there a general adaptability of ERP Next within the government sector in Africa? Well, what happened in Africa is that uh, in the past, especially a lot of these are funded by World Bank, EU, and so on, open source was always seen as cheap, not that great, maybe it doesn't have all the features, is it really safe? Who is going to support it? These are all the sort of questions that ever came up. So the most important thing is today, open source is now an established concept. It is an acceptable concept. Not only is it acceptable, but it is the direction that many countries are willing to take, especially within the government. So that, to answer your question, yes. But as I said, all the other factors capabilities, security, scalability, support, will still matter a lot. But the answer to your question is, today, Africa is ready for open source. Right. Thank you so much, Mr. Harish Bhatt. Thank you. That was really insightful Thank you. to understand the African landscape from the business lens. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, Next stop, we'll have Mr. Muchai Gatro and Mr. Mitesh Choksi joining us. Uh, they are considered to be godfathers in the African region. They have been the longest standing community members in the region as well. And they have contributed actively to the technological advancement for the African localization. So we welcome both of you. Thank you. So my first question would be to Machai. How, have we, how has been your journey so far? And currently you are a silver partner as well. So how, have, how has been your journey so far with Frappe and ERP Next? So to answer that question, probably the best answer would be, it's really been a good journey with Frappe or Frappe products. Uh, but let me say how we started with this, especially with the ERP Next, for example. Uh, for starters, I've been dealing with the ERPs for a long time. <laughs> since 2011, for example. 
So when we started Navari around 2016, the idea was to continue working with the product we knew, which was uh, Microsoft Dynamics. Uh, but we had some challenges implementing uh, some big customers, for example. Then came 2018, uh, there's an employee from one of the customers we had implemented Dynamics for who left the company and went to another company. So they called us and they said, uh, do you have a product that is not as expensive as Microsoft Dynamics? So we implemented for them ERP Next uh, 2018, October, that was our first customer. And uh, since then we have exclusively been dealing with ERP Next. At the moment, you are a team of 12, uh, and I'm very proud of the team. Generally, that's my proudest moment up to now. So it's the same question to Mitesh as well, since you also have been in the community for a really long time, and currently you're a gold partner as well, and the second largest contributing partner as well. <laughs> so thank, please thank you. share your journey. Thank you for giving us the opportunity again. And uh, our Journey started like five years back. We went ahead from bronze to silver to gold. But obviously the driving factor was having a product, having team who can deal with the customer and then forwarding it to the customers for them to be able to benefit out of it. The, a lot because we went through a few years before the partnership model, the current partnership model is in place. So what happened is that we had to put a lot of trust without having a background, because we are five years old company, we did not have a background of how much uh, it was there. But the fact that we could manage to pull ourselves up to gold is probably means everybody else can do it as well. Also that the fact that the customers are trusting, like we had mentioned earlier, it is also a plus point for us. And I'll, I'll definitely resonate to what uh, Kanaya mentioned in terms of what partnership is about. Uh, we actually have been encouraging partners to be onboarded so that we can have an ecosystem with which we all can thrive and raise our boards with the tide that, tide that comes up. So yeah, that, that's, that's been our journey. My second question would be, uh, you have been uh, working in the African region for a really long time and you have also created localized application on top of ERP Next and the framework. Can you talk about that as well? No problem. Uh, so, so to answer the same question, probably most of the customizations uh, which we end up working with because most of the customizations we work on are based on what the customers are asking for. Most fall around integrations, and we know we talk about integrations. We are talking about payment integrations, for example, M-Pesa. I was talking to Sakib here. The first integration we did we, for ERP Next was on M-Pesa on Post, and then we so M-Pesa is like a ubiquitous payments a platform in Kenya or Africa generally, most countries. Uh, so that's also the first integration. The next integration or the next customization we have worked on is the uh, localizations for compliance. So we based it on India compliance. I think I even talked to Saga when we were starting to build it. So we are bit for Kenya and uh, Burundi. That's how it is. Same question to you, Mutesh. Yep. So I would say that without localization, we wouldn't have been here. Our first customer was implemented after localization was done. Without that, a customer would not be able to uh, be onboarded with a manner that is able to use, and because accounting is the first module that goes on board. So accounting taxation was necessary. Then we have made many other apps, all open source obviously, and they are covering the health sector, which is managing the national insurance uh, integration. Uh, it, it, we have covered with the um, property management modules as well, we have covered with the taxation, the e-invoicing that you have here, we call it virtual fiscal device. So that has also been done. And we have many more other Tanzanian specific apps which are sitting on top of ERP Next, sitting on top of actually a layer of localization and helping the customers get their business done with the local flavor within. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mitesh. Thank you, Machai, for sharing your valuable insights with us. Thank you so much. That was really inspiring. Thank you. So thank you, everyone, and hope to see you around. So next stop, I'll call uh, Puneet. 
थैंक यू अंकिता so you all have been watching me hosting the event and you don't know what i do so i work in the revenue team and i look after americas and europe so since we are running late so i'll quickly take you through the presentations so my colleagues have talked about the way frappe is growing but they have not talked about how big the market is so you the market is expected to reach 93 billion dollar market by 2028 with a cagr of 9.2% and majority of it is in north america 38% market share so this is how big the global erp market is when we know, you know when we think talk about frappe open source we don't think that how big the global market is and this is where we have to target and try to achieve at least 1% of it how fast the open source erp market is growing is growing at 11.5% cagr According to a survey by Reddit, 91% of industry leaders said that it is strategically important for their enterprise plans to have open source. What about the Americas growth? So you can see we've been growing 11% month on month, not annually. You can see we have quadrupled our revenue in one year. so when i joined the organization is today is my today i have completed one year in frappe by the way so when i had joined we only had five partners serving americas now we have a partner network of 17 one of the partner is yet to renew so we'll count at 17 uh, when they come back will be 18 again talking about the revenue contribution of partner and non partner so this is the most important slide of the presentation you can see the potential as a partner all the partners who are sitting here who are thinking that should they operate in americas or not this is the slide you should focus that at the moment 30% of the revenue is coming from partners but 70% is coming from customers who have directly started using frappe cloud it is not that uh, difficult to sell frappe cloud to them they fairly understand how difficult it is to uh, manage hosting so it's better to outsource it and give the headache to somebody else so it's fairly easy to do that the only thing is if you're capable enough if you understand the product if you understand the requirements you'll get the job localization all my colleagues have talked about the localization everybody has been doing so in last 12 months i've received lot of request lot of uh, leads asking for you know us payroll so we thought through incubator program why not just get started with it so we'll talk about it in few minutes canada payroll is fairly dependent on us payroll once that gets rolled out we'll start with canada payroll Mexico in e invoicing that's an app that is available on Frappe Cloud marketplace it's been developed by is developed by Beverin Softwares Panama accounting so th uh, this again the project is already on roll phase 1 is already completed uh, the server is also commissioned by the customer and phase 2 should get done by in next 2 to 3 months and that will be up and ready and el salvador accounting so we uh, we were reached out by a university saying that can you de develop an accounting solution for el salvador region so we told them that first evaluate the system in case you have once you are satisfied with it we'll connect you to a partner who will develop it for you so at the moment they are evaluating the system so what is the future of americas so obviously we want to we've just started it's been just one year and we've quadrupled it but then this is not the pace or the revenue i'm satisfied with so we have a long way to go we want to double the partner network uh, obviously we, we can have as many partners we want but we want quality partners who understand and deliver quality because they are extension of frappe so we want quality partners so we want to at least double the partner network and then you've seen that a uh, lot of my colleagues have talked about local events so we're going to start with frappe local events in us and finish the localization and then as in morning healthcare application been talked about so develop localized healthcare applications as well so i'm going to invite on stage course and the partner who has gone from bronze to silver in a year and the success they've had sapna she's the co-founder of course and and head of sales hi everybody uh good evening i hope you all are feeling fresh so i'm here to share some fresh ideas with you all 
so if I talk about course and success journey, uh, I think uh, most of that is attributed to the support from Frappe, especially Puneet here. So I would definitely give credit to his responsiveness and support and uh, motivating our trust, not just in the product, but also us as Corsin, because our complete focus is on customer experience. I think if you have a strong customer experience and you really trust the product, I think the customer will never want to leave you. Thank, Thank you. you. Sapna, you are also involved in developing US payroll. Can you highlight the process you've been following and how far we have reached in completion to that? I think uh, US payroll has been challenging because um, it's not just um, you know implementation, it's also about tax compliances and tax compliances change every year or they can change frequently. And when you talk about 50 states of US, um, I think it's really interesting uh, that we are, we wanted to launch do the event, but uh, we'll be coming up with the complete product very soon. With a strong focus that our SMEs have, uh, I think we should be uh, there with an the update this year on US nice. payroll. And the other part which I want to talk about is the success story of Chewy. So to give you a background to it, last year uh, around October, we were reached out by Chewy. Chewy is the biggest company in the world in pet care industry. They are $12 billion enterprise. They are listed on New York Stock Exchange and they were involved in the successful implementation of a project. So yesterday in the partners meet, a lot of partners were asking, you know, how to handle uh, enterprise clients? Is the product ready for them? So can you please elaborate on the success? Thank you. So I think uh, the biggest factor that is responsible for an enterprise uh, implementation is to understand the organizational change management. That is uh, the risk mitigation strategies that go into ensuring that uh, your customer feels that you are taking care of it. So I think with enterprises, there is hard work, there is patience, but then there is resilience. So through that journey and uh, accelerating and scaling up through a system which is fabulous when I talk about customization and flexibility, I think uh, the key ingredient has been patience. Nice. So we have developed a vendor partner portal for them. From there, they are managing 15,000 vendors. Uh, moving on to the next question, like you have grown fastest in the last seven to eight months. How do you want to continue the same growth rate so that Next year when we invite you, you're a gold partner. Okay, thank you. So I think uh, the major uh, factor, like I said, is customer experience, but also trust and uh, to continually uh, grow in that uh, journey, it's important that you keep on upgrading your knowledge. Um, you know, know your product rather than reinventing the wheel. And of course, uh, you know, show that trust and confidence to your customer. I think uh, that's what, and uh, we are also coming up eventually with a contract life cycle, you know, going to replace uh, DocuSign with redlining and negotiations. So I think that's something that is upcoming with Corsin very soon. So with a strong focus on manufacturing and services, I think um, there's nothing that Frappe cannot solve, but uh, it's all about simplifying the problem statement. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sapna. So as I said, along with US, I take care of Europe. So Europe was was being taken away by Mayank, who was the host last year. And I think he's here because he started his own company, he left the organization. And so I have only started taking care of it in last quarter. So I want to talk about the diversity that we have in Europe. So this chart talks about the region in Europe from where we get the leads. So you can see almost every country has reached out to us for a particular request. So you can see the potential. This is the growth chart. And we have sort of grown like 14% in the last two months. Talking about again the localization, so we received a lot of requests from Germany, Australia, Switzerland, UK. So we have partners, farmers, alive who have done a German accounting system in ERP and they are fairly good with it, fairly straightforward. So obviously they are the pioneer in it. We have uh, partners who have done in Austria, Switzerland and Switzerland, I think it's available in GitHub, on GitHub as well, UK. Talking about the marketing and event plans, so you must have seen the webinars that are conducted on YouTube. So we've been doing that. 
we want to continue doing that we want to continue doing it in the local languages so we'll soon have it in german language we'll soon have it in spanish language so we'll invite the partners who are trained and capable enough to conduct a webinar you can pick a topic you want to do a general erp next demo you can do that in case if you want to showcase a product or the custom application that you have developed in your local language please you're welcome reach out to your partner managers and reach out to me if you are a european partner and you want to you know conduct a webinar and events uh, as i said we will be announcing for frappe local germany uh, it will soon be up in by the end of the next week and it will happen in february 8th and 9th uh, in germany frappe local that is it thank you